Hey guys, how are you? Good morning. It's a very, very bright and yellow morning. So if you, if you see my shiny face, my sunny face, it's because it's very, very bright today for some strange reason. Um, today it's Monday. Uh, we are going to start the day, uh, the day, the week by a star. Uh, we're gonna start reading your um, reading textbook. So we are going to go to page thirty-six. So everybody go to page 36, Monday, today is Monday, November 9th, 2020. Uh, and we are going to go to page 20 to read the story, Cooking Up, oh, no, not 20, 30, 36, okay. So, sorry, I made a mistake. It's 36 and 37, cooking up a tasty Cinco de Mayo. A Cinco de Mayo or Cinco de Mayo. It's a celebration uh, that uh, the mix, if I'm not incorrect, I hope that I'm correct. It's the celebration that the Mexican community um, organizes in the States to celebrate. Uh, we're gonna talk a little about it later. Um, in the story, but I think that they celebrate kind of like something like or 15 de septiembre, kind of, a little. Okay, so page 36, cooking up a tasty Cinco de Mayo. Have you ever prepared a meal from another culture? This is about food. So a meal is a dish, a plate of food that comes from another culture. Alicia and Marco wander down the sidewalk, taking in the sounds, sights, and smell all around them. Alicia loved the swirling colors of the dancer's skirts. Marco topped his feet in time for the familiar beat of the mariachi band. The air was filled with wonderful aroma of meat and vegetables cooking or over a hot grill. Finally, Alicia and Marco reached a large tent. This is it, Marco, said Alicia, pointing to a banner that read 12th annual Cinco de Mayo cooking classes. Alicia and Marco ducked inside the tent and let their eyes adjust to the light that seemed dim in comparison to the bright afternoon sun. Let me guess, called a woman wearing a colorful embroidered blouse. You too must be Alicia and Marco Ruiz. The brother and sister nodded. Or that sign, not, sign us up for the cooking class, said Marco. He thinks everyone should know how to cook, added Alicia. The woman smiled. He's right. My name is Miss Juarez. No one else is registered for this session. So it looks like it will be just the three of us. That's going to be a very fun cooking class when there's not a lot of people around. You can start by washing your hands over there, she said pointing to a sink. Then we'll talk about some of the ingredients that are traditionally used in Mexican cooking. We'll also learn how to make a few healthy and tasty dishes. Do either of you have a favorite Mexican dish? Marco was dying, drying his hand on a red dish towel. I was hoping we might learn to make gazpacho. It's one of my mom's favorites in the summer. Gazpacho is an excellent cold soup to make on a hot day. What kind of ingredients do you think we'll need? Asked Miss Juarez. Mmm, said Marco. I know there are tomatoes, cucumbers, and celery in it. My family likes spicy foods, so there is probably some kind of pepper in it too. That's right, said Miss Juarez. I use green and red peppers for flavor and a jalapeno pepper for sing. So these peppers are what we call chile dulce, okay? They call them peppers. Oh my God, I look so strange in this yellow light. Um, how about you, Alicia? Asked Miss Juarez. Do you have any favorites? I love empanadas, replied Alicia, but I never made them myself before. What kind of ingredients do you think we'll need to make empanadas? I'm not sure what ingredients are used in the dough, but that always makes them with pumpkin filling, said Alicia. I think they have some cinnamon and nutmeg in them too. 
Very good. I see that both of you pay attention to the flavors in the foods you eat. That is very important. I like the two dishes you have chosen. Both of them use several traditional Mexican ingredients. I thought we could also make one of my favorite dishes, arroz con pollo. Do you have any ideas about what that is? Arroz means rice. And pollo is chicken, said Alicia. So arroz con pollo is chicken with rice, finished Marco. Excellent, said Miss Juarez, walking toward the refrigerator at the far end of the tent. Are you ready to begin? She asked. I can wait, said Marco. All this talk about food is making me hungry. So they were getting ready to have a cooking class in the Mexican style because Cinco de Mayo is all about celebrating the Mexican culture. So they were very excited. I'm sorry if my face looks red and strange dark. It's because the, 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 the light that I'm getting from outside is yellow. So I don't know. Let's go to the questions in page 36. Remember, you can either copy them on your um, notebook or you can print the page if you have access to a printer. Num write the words from the story that I have the meanings below. A pleasant scent or smell from paragraph number one. Now, in this opportunity, I'm going to give you one or three questions that you're going to have to answer alone. So I'm going to say for an example, okay, in this list one, you're going to do it alone. So you can practice how to find questions by yourself. So a pleasant scent from, from paragraph one, we have Alicia and Marco wander down the sidewalk taking in the sounds, sights and smells around them. Alicia loved the swirling colors at the dancers. Skirts. Marco tap his fingers in time to the mariachi beat of the mariachi band. The air was filled with the wonderful aroma of meat and vegetables cooking over a hot grill. So I'm pretty sure that um, for a pleasant smell or scent, it would be aroma. From paragraph number one. Paragraph number two. Oh, sorry. Yeah, well, yes, from paragraph number two, get used to, get used to. Let's go to paragraph number two. Finally, Alicia and Marco reached a large tent. This is it, Marco, said Alicia, pointing to a vanet that read 12 annual Cinco de Mayo cooking classes. Alicia and Marco ducked inside the tent and let their eyes adjust, adjust. So I think that the, co the, the, the most accurate word for uh, get used to would be adjust from paragraph number two. Next, three, not very bright also from paragraph number two. Not very bright. I'll, finally, Alicia and Marco reach a large tent. This is it, Marco, said Alicia pointing to a bonnet that read 12 annual Cinco de Mayo cooking classes. Alicia and Marco dug inside the tent and let the eyes adjust to the light that seemed dim. Dim is the word that we're looking for. So in number three, not very bright, we can write dim. Number four, decorated with the signs made by needle and thread from paragraph number three. Let's see. Let me guess, called a woman wearing a colorful embroidered blouse. You too must be Alicia and Marco Ruiz. So embroidered would be the correct word for number three. We have, uh, sorry, for number four. Decorated with designs made by needle and thread it would be embroidered from paragraph number three. Number five, what do you think Miss Juarez means when she says she uses jalapeno pepper for sing? For sing. Because she says that she uses mostly bell peppers, but jalapeno for sing, for a small space. So you can write in there, um, she means a small spicy flavor, a small flavor, something very discreet. 
Um, number six, why wasn't anyone else in Alicia and Marcos's cooking class? I don't really know that for real, but there's a lot of fun things to make, so you can write in there. Nobody else is there because they are someone else having fun. No one else is there because they are somewhere else having fun. Number seven, do you think that Alicia and Marco will cook anything for the parents? Why or why not? So this is the one of the ones that you're gonna answer alone. You can either say yes, they are going to cook it for their parents or no, they will not be cooking for their parents. And then you have to write because. Yes, they will be cooking for their parents because they love them or no, they will not be cooking for their parents because they don't want to. Number uh, next, read the descriptions below. Write A next to a phrase if it describes Alicia and M if it describes Marco. Wants to learn how to make gazpacho. Who was that? Was that the boy or the girl? Mm, you have to go back to the story. Loves empanadas. I'm pretty sure this is Alicia, so you can write A. Enjoys watching the dancers at the fiesta. Mm, I'm not gonna say that one to you. You should go back to the story and find it. Number 11, what is gazpacho? What ingredients does it contain? So we were saying in there, in the story, we can write at the beginning, gazpacho contains Okay, gazpacho, it's, gazpacho contains, it says that it's a cold soup, gazpacho contains tomatoes, cucumbers, from paragraph number 10, number 10, cume, tomatoes, cucumbers, and celery, okay? So you can write that in your answer. It contains tomatoes, celery, cucumbers. Number, um, oh wait, oh yes, okay, so we were doing 11. And finally 12, how do Alicia and Marco feel about the cooking class? How do you know? So we go back to the last parts that you're supposed to read alone and I think that I read them with you. Um, How, 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 what? Let's see. How do Alicia and Marco feel about the cooking class? How do you know? So far I would say that they feel happy because they are giving different recipes for all the things that they wanna make. So that could be a good answer for you. So far, this is it for today. I hope that you have had fun. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I hope that you filled in everything. And if you didn't, you can always rewind the video and rewatch what you don't understand. Uh, I'm sending you a lot of hugs from here and I'll see you tomorrow. Remember, you can print the page or you can write everything in the notebook with complete sentences, okay? Bye guys.